Hi everyone, I am Mark with GeoTrek and you just got your keys so I'm going to show you a full breakdown on what everything is inside the van and how to use everything. So follow me. This upgrades a headliner shelf. Sometimes I like to stuff these curtains up here if we're not using that. Now I will show you how to charge your rear battery, the Delta Pro, while we are driving. So there's a switch on the side of the driver's seat here which acts as a breaker and an on off switch. While you are driving, you can turn on the switch, which will allow the Delta Pro to charge. So right now the tab is in the off position, and when you flip it in, that's when it's on. I make sure to keep it off while the vehicle is off, so we don't drain the vehicle's battery. The battery at 400 watts per hour, and it can be just adjusted in the EcoFlow app. And it can even go up to 1800 watts if plugged into a household outlet instead of the inverter, which is located behind the Delta Pro. The Delta Pro has a 3600 watt hour or a 300 amp hour battery, which takes about nine hours to charge from zero to 100%. With the extra battery, it would be about 18 hours. And next, I'm gonna show you how the swivel seat works. So this, this is the lever that will actuate the swivel. And this lever right here is to actuate the seat going forward and backwards. It's gonna vary on different models of the Sprinter you have. Um, so first up, I move this and then I, turn the seat forward just like that and then that way we can and then I pull that swivel uh, lever and I pull it and you can rotate it just like that once it's in this position then you can rotate it back to a comfortable position and even lower the seat as well if you'd like with that uh, lever on the side so you can also move it forward and back from this position and we can even install a second swivel mount here or on, this, on the bottom of the seat here. That way you can have a table in between here. All right, so moving front to back, we're gonna start with the safety features. So at the very front we have, we have the fire extinguisher and the carbon monoxide and smoke detector two-in-one unit. Next is the massive fridge and that can have so many cans and tons of space and I even put you can probably put about four quarts of ice cream in there if you want. So, awesome. And then we have the two burner cooktop, so you can cook some awesome meals and crack that window and it'd be really nice, you can cook inside. We're gonna head to the sink and to turn that on, we just click this water pump right here and then we have some water going out just like that. So it's on the cold setting only right now. If you want to, we can add a water heater which will allow you to, to have that hot setting, but just pulling that just like that. But right now it's just draining outside, but if you don't want to, it to drain outside and you're in a parking lot, you can just push that plug in right there and then it will just accumulate water. Then when you're you know, on the road, you can drain at an appropriate location. To the right of that is the soap dispenser. So you can put hand soap or dish soap in there. That makes it really convenient for dishes. When I'm done using it, I turn this water pump switch off. That way it just limits strain on the actual water pump. And then in the winter, it's very important and I highly recommend to drain all of the water from your tank and pump. Some people live in it full time during the winter, but I recommend it just going without water because of the damage it could cause on your water pumps. So I empty that last bit of water that you just saw come out right there, because if not, water will be trapped in this unit here and it will explode. So very important that I even sometimes leave that lever open that way there's no water that can be exploding in there. So right now our builds come with just room temperature water and we don't have any heating system. A couple of reasons for that is because it takes a lot of power and electricity to, to heat the water. So what we can do though is put a electric heater in the back and that goes right under the sink and it just uses the inverter here to power that. You get a lot of questions about heating your van and with the EcoFlow Wave 2, you can heat your van, but with limited hours of sunlight, you, you know, you might be draining your batteries too much. So what we can do is use the diesel fuel and have a diesel heater, and that goes right underneath the passenger seat. We only use the S-Bar diesel heaters, and it is a bit more expensive, but we really value it, and it's a very quality piece. Um, it just taps into your fuel tank and uses a gallon every about eight hours or so. So you're gonna be pretty efficient with fuel and it will keep your inside the vehicle very warm.
Okay, so with the water pump off, this is your switch for the Wii Boost, which is the cellular extender. So if you're at a place that has only one bar of service, you might have four bars LTE of service. This is a 12 volt plug over here. Some people put diffusers, mini fans, various sorts in there. There's two USBs in here. Also, four USBs here, two USB-Cs there. And then there's also two USBs on the reading lights. Over on the side here is your 12 volt side and this white light is on. If you click that off, all of the lights in the fridge, everything went off in the van. You just turn it right back on and that's to turn on your 12 volt power again. So you're considering an extra battery and I'm, I'm just gonna run you through a little bit of what that consists of. This is our 300 amp hour battery that's included in our build, which is a lot of power. It will power your AC unit for about 10 to 12 hours on eco mode. So with the extra battery, that would double your battery capacity to 600 amp hours now, but it still recharges at the same speed with solar and charging while driving. So what that unit will do is it's just going to be sitting on the other side of this and be plugged in the back of the unit and it will take up the space of the cubbies. And if you choose not to have it, you'll just have that space as cargo space. Next is the swivel table. So how we operate it is with these latches right here. And as you can see, this is tightening it going to the right and then loosening it going to the left. So I tighten it right there and then you just push this button out and then that way you can move the lever while keeping it on its same tightness level. So you can maximize the tightness and without running into a solid surface just like that. So now it will move less in this plane of direction. So then we can do the next thing over here as well just to keep it in a stiff spot. That way it won't move while you're driving. All right, so next I'm gonna talk about lighting. I'll close the door for that. All right, so these three switches are your lights. So this one on this far left is the under cabinet lights. So that's the soft backlit light. And then the left and the right are the other lights. All right, next is the fan. On this fan, it has the on off button. Um, we do have an upgraded fan, which it has a remote on it, so you can control it remotely. I recommend keeping that lid down though while you're driving because it just increases air resistance. Okay, so here are the reading lights. So you just click this button that turns it on and then you hold it to increase or decrease brightness. And then on the bottom is the USB port so you can charge your phone and then you can just click that button, just turn it off. It's a good night light and reading light. Um, at night. So this bed is about 74 inches and for some people that might not be enough. If you'd like a bigger bed then what we can do is use these flares or sometimes referred as capsules and they're basically fiberglass pieces that go on the outside of your van. We paint them black and we will sound deaden and carpet the interior of them and that allows for you to sleep long ways rather than front to north to south. If you want some extra ventilation in your build, you can opt for a window that has a sliding screen and opening, just like this one. It'll look identical and it will have a lock on it, but it comes standard with this fixed window that we do on all of our builds. All right, so next is under the cabinet. To the right is that propane tank, and if you don't have a gas stove, then it, that's not gonna be there. That's gonna be empty space for you. And next to that is the drain valve. So that goes straight down to the ground. If you have a gray water tank, it will go straight to that gray water tank. And then we just close those doors and push those buttons back in to latch that. For the upper cabinets, you just click that button. It pulls right up and there is a pass through on both sides. And then just bringing that back down. All right, so next is the back. I'm gonna show you the water and the power setup and all the storage we have back there. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the inside. On the 2018s, you have these latches here which can hold it open. On the 2019s, it just self opens and it holds in there. So just like that, and that latch is there. If you do have a 2018, I'd make sure to pull this forward just slightly and then latch this here. That way it doesn't damage this. A really important thing is when this ladder opens all the way, it's going to hit the side of the van just so slightly. So I just do that very carefully. First thing you see when we walk in is this, this is your water intake. So we just unscrew that to the left and enter the water. It's just a hose. You can also get one of those 
um, seven gallon blue jugs and you can fill it up manually. You fill that up in a gas station and then dump it into here if there's no hose access. On iOverlander is a great app to get that you can find water ports to fill up your van. And on the left here is the water inlet port. That way you can see how much water you have left and it does backlight as well. So up front here in this hole you can kind of see the Delta Pro. It's the unit that already comes in our build out. However, this unit right here is the extra battery that doubles the amp hour size from 300 to 600 amp hours. The next button to notice on the back is your breaker reset button. So if there's ever a trip, you just click that button in the back there. That was the interior of the van. Now I'm gonna take you on the exterior of some of the things up top and the outlet ports on the side. All right, so these are some of the exterior things that's gonna be attaching to the van. So on the left here is the EV port, and this is an upgrade. This is just kind of a fun thing we tried. And uh, basically, if you find an EV charger, you can charge your battery and it only takes an hour. All right, so the first thing you see is this mount right here, and that just allows it to just flip that up and it comes off, you flip it down, and that's how to activate the suction. So you, put, you can put that in there, kind of put your angle in, and then to turn it on, you can do that, or you can put the other shower setting on and having it shower like that. So you can even decrease the speed a little bit so it can serve water. When you're done, just bring it back inside, and then to take this mount off, just like that.